All right, guys, so let's just go ahead and get right into it. The very first um, section of your foldable is the commutative property. So first on the left-hand side, what does the commutative property mean? So what you can think of with commutative is the first two letters say that you can CO or change order. Change the order. Okay. Another way that you may think um, to remember commutative is if you know the definition of the word commute, meaning people travel somewhere. So the terms that you have uh, in your expression can travel. So in this first one, 3 plus 2, we could also write that as 2 plus 3. Okay. 5 times 7 can also be written as 7 times 5. Okay. 17 plus 8 plus 3 can also be written as 17 plus 3 plus 8. And in this problem, you can see where that's useful because 17 plus 3 we know is 20, and then we can just add the 8 to it. It makes the problem a little bit easier. On that last example, 5 times 18 times 2 can also be written as 5 times 2 times 18. And again, making the problem a little easier because we know 5 times 2 is 10, and then we can just multiply it by 18 really easily. So that's, in a nutshell, the commutative property. The next property that we're going to speak about is the associative property. Okay? And with the associative property, um, you can associate with different groups. Associate with different groups. And you can think about you and your friends. You associate with different groups of people. You may associate with one group of people in your first period class or another group of people at the lunch table. Um, so we associate with different groups. You can also um, think of this as moving the parentheses. Move parentheses. Okay. And so here are a couple of examples where you've got 6 plus and then in parentheses you've got 4 plus 8. Well, we can change it and put the 6 and 4 together in parentheses to make 10 and then add the 8 afterwards. So we want to associate making the problem a little bit easier uh, based on how we group uh, the numbers or the terms. Where you've got 4 times and then the quantity of 5 times 9, well, we could do 4 times 5 instead, making that 20, and then do 20 times 9. Okay? Uh, and in your last example, 4 plus 2 plus negative 2, well, if we group or associate the 2 with the negative 2, that equals 0, and then we just add the 4. Okay, so associative property, associating with different groups. The next property we've got is the identity property for addition or multiplication. Okay, and so with the identity property, you can add 0 uh, to keep the number's identity. And identity meaning that same number. So add zero to keep the number's identity, or uh, you can multiply by one. You can multiply by one to keep the number's identity. I'm just going to shortcut this number's identity. So identity means we want to keep the same value. So with the identity property of addition, 975 plus 0 keeps the same identity or the same value, 975. Okay? If we want negative 7 to have the same value or the same identity, we add it to 0. Okay. Um, with 5 plus 3 plus negative 3, or negative 3 plus 3, well, 3 and negative 3 is 0, so it's keeping the identity of 5. Okay. With 20, negative 28, if we want to keep that same identity and we're multiplying, well, we know any number times 1 keeps that same value. Okay. 3 and 75 hundredths, if we multiply it by 1, we get to keep the same value or the same identity. So identity property, you want to think keeping your same identity or keeping your same value, not changing that number's value. And we could do that by adding 0 or by multiplying by 1. 
All right, the next property that we are going to discuss is the inverse property for addition or multiplication. So the inverse property um, for addition is that we can add a number um, to its opposite add a number to its opposite and the answer is zero. Or the inverse property of multiplication is we can multiply a number by its and some of you may remember this word, reciprocal. Multiply number by its reciprocal, and the answer is one. So for the inverse property of addition, we add a number to its opposite. So three plus what will give you zero? Well, it's three plus negative three, the opposite. Negative seven and a half added to its opposite, seven and a half, gives you zero. Same with the uh, multiplication, now is not adding it to its opposite, but with multiplying, we multiply by its reciprocal. So two, remember if you were to write that as a uh, fraction, that'd be two over one, well its reciprocal is when you flip that fraction. So multiplying it by one over two, um, you would get two over two, which simplifies to one. Um, with three-fourths, if we multiply it by its reciprocal, meaning we flip that fraction, so four over three, well, um, three times four is twelve, four times three is twelve, so that's twelve over twelve, or one. So inverse property, the inverse property of addition is adding to its opposite, the inverse property of multiplication would be multiplying by its reciprocal to get one. All right, on to the next property in your foldable is the distributive property. And um, when you think of distribute, hopefully you think of something like maybe giving out. So you give out something when you distribute, like you might be distributing papers in class or maybe distributing money, whatever it may be, giving out, okay? So you distribute uh, the number to each part. So if I distributed papers in class, I'm going to distribute one out to each student, okay? Um, so if my students are A and B, a, I'm going to distribute a paper. I'm going to give one paper to A, and I'm going to give a paper to B. A, so I'm distributing out. So um, with your first example here, 4 times 20 plus 3, well, we're going to distribute the 4. The 4 is going to go to the 20, and the 4 is going to go to the 3. So that's the same as 4 times 20 plus 4 times 3. Okay. If I distribute the 6 into 30 minus 1, well, I've got to do 6 given to the 30 and 6 given to the 1, okay? So that's 6 times 30, and with the minus sign there, 6 times 1. Uh, in this last example, I've got 8 times 99 cents. Well, if I did 8 times 1, I've got to think, okay, 1 minus what would give me that 99 cents here? Well, $1 minus 1 cent would give me that 99 cents. So this is 8 times a dollar minus 8 times 1 cent. All right, and so um, last property that we've got to go over here is the zero product property. Okay? And all the zero product property is is zero times a number. Okay? Zero product. Zero product equals zero times a number. Okay. So 21 times zero, zero. Negative eight times what will give you zero? Zero. Okay. 
negative 6 times negative 4 plus 4. Well, we know negative 4 plus 4 is 0, so 6 times 0 is 0. Last one, 793 times 5, 16 times 0. Now, some of you would do this multiplication, but if you know that this product times 0 is going to give you 0, no need to do that. So these different properties can really aid you in answering some different algebraic expressions, making these easier for you, okay? So make sure that you have your foldable completely filled out and come to class ready to identify and work with these different properties in class tomorrow. Good night, guys. Bye.